adults, two, five, and seven, will spend an entire day looking for a rock that have mica in it, because mica is what is in our eyeshadow that gives the sparkly. And they will get paid approximately a cent a day. You can sit down. A cent a day for working all day long in the hot sun. And these are small children looking for rocks. Okay, guys, your turn. Stand up if you're wearing underwear. And I don't want to see anybody going commando. No commandos in this room. Stand up. Okay. You go ahead, and as you sit down, as you're sitting down, realize that what's on your bottom, okay, there's some form of cotton, even if it's in the thread of the clothes you are wearing. We have cotton, and so much of our cotton is, comes from Uzbekistan. Every single fall, 20 million kids and teachers, by the way, for the teachers in this room, are sent out to harvest cotton, and they don't get paid normally. Terrible working conditions, no medical. Thousands of kids die harvesting cotton. Now, I do want to give you some good news along that line. That particular injustice has come to the forefront of the world. And there are companies like The Gap who say, we are not going to buy cotton that's been produced in Uzbekistan. We're not going to buy from vendors whose textiles contain cotton coming from them because they know the injustice of these kids going out and picking cotton. Okay. Who likes chocolate? You like chocolate? Who else? No. Okay. okay, way back in the back. If I can get that bar. All right, chocolate. I threw out Dove Bars. Dove Bars is made by Mars. Mars, Hershey's, Nestle's, all of those companies know with 100% certainty that part of their supply chain contains chocolate, that was produced by children slave labor. Yeah. Dove is made by Mars. M&M's is made by Mars. Yeah, it's Dove and it's made by Mars. Mars, Nestle's, and Hershey's, they all have you know, candy bars underneath them again. Thank you for asking them. <laughs> anyway, so I want to tell you about, um, about cocoa. There are 600,000 plantations just along the Ivory Coast in Africa. They export 43% of the world's chocolate. And we as Americans, we consume $13 billion worth of chocolate. At the expense of people like Allie. So I want to tell you about how Allie got trafficked. Allie was 11 years old when he was lured by a slave trader. He said, come to work on my cotton plantation, and I will give you a bicycle and $150. Now, you guys have all studied third world nations, and you know that's huge. So Allie went to the plantation. Once he got to the plantation, anything than what he expected. He was up at 6 o'clock in the morning. He was there for 12 hours a day. He was working in heat, mosquitoes, snakes, no medical, had a diet of mashed bananas. At the end of the day, you think he might get a little rest, but, but no. Allie was forced back into a locked shed with 18 other young men, a can in the corner in case he had to urinate, and not let out until the next morning, only to go through the daily nightmare again. That's a true story, and that's Allie on the screen. And the closest thing that Allie got to a bicycle were the bicycle chains that were used to beat him. I'm going to uh, talk real quickly about Haiti. I know a lot of you guys have heard Haiti recently in the last year or two because of the earthquake. Maybe some of you even participated in some relief efforts. Haiti makes me sick to my stomach. Haiti has a rest of it system that allows for young children under 15 
to be held as domestic servitude slaves. And many times, I want to tell you what, as nighttime falls, those domestic slaves then get turned into sex slaves. Now, is it me, or is it just plain strange that you can have a small child employed until they're 15, it's illegal, and then at 15 you have to pay them? There are thousands and thousands and thousands of kids in Haiti that are being used under the rest of the system. And when the um, earthquake hit, people that are in the abolitionist movement like myself, we are just cringing because we know in a natural disaster like a tsunami or an earthquake, that there are traffickers coming from all over the world to snatch up kids who have been separated from their parents or maybe orphaned and taken to all parts of the world. And that is happening in Haiti as we speak. E. Benjamin Skinner wrote The Crime So Monstrous. Literally, got on a plane in New York at noon. By 5 o'clock, he was in the position to buy a young boy to do anything that he wanted with him, to take him anywhere he wanted to go for $50. True story. I want to take another short clip, and I want, I want you to sh uh, see, maybe kind of be able to empathize. This is the day in the life of an American young boy and his counterpart that works 